Wednesday, October 10th, 2018. It's uh, early in the morning, about quarter after 7 a.m. Eastern Time. I just want to cover some radar anomalies and quick look at Michael. Now, we won't be able to look, take a look at the visible feed yet because the sun isn't quite up. But last night, we have this cold front marching through Texas. Take a look at the... See this area of dry air pushing across. There's another good look over here for the past few frames. You see it just shoving this mass of moisture across. Just, I mean, pushing it, squeezing it. But anyways, this shows up on the radar, I guess. Here's another look. You can see it. Now, I used to call these heterodyne rolls, but... I got educated by Mr. Billy Hayes of what I'm actually seeing here. You'll notice all these little dots around the transmitter. Right here, right here, all these dots. Now, Billy informed me that this is actually, this, those little dots, let me get over to this map, I have, this is uh, wind farms pulled up. And you'll notice all these wind farms in Texas. Okay, we also, for later, pay attention to these wind farms in Illinois. Now what this does, the cool dry air sets off an elevated, statically charged atmosphere above the wind farms. This in turn creates a sudden change in the upper atmospheric densities and produces straight line winds. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here in Texas last night. And on this radar here, all these little dots. Now I can, I can uh, look at the whole composite image, and I can damn near pick out all the wind farms across the country by just looking for these little dots. Like here's some in Kansas. Usually you'll see a whole bunch here in Illinois, but we're getting that same kind of signature here. You see this red flash now. You see these dots here around the transmitter? These are the wind farms. And I've covered this before because I've caught these red pulses. And what this does is, like I said, creates a static charge above the transmitter, ionizes the sky, kind of, so to speak. But I'll leave a link to this post so you can read it yourself. I just made examples here like Here's this red one I caught three weeks in a row in Texas, and you'll notice this little white patch right here to the left of the transmitter. And then I pull up this photo here, and the transmitter is like over here, but then you have this massive wind farms right here. This one's in Indianapolis or Indiana, the transmitter's in Indianapolis, and you'll notice this patch of dots up here. Well, right here's my photo, here's Indianapolis. And then up here I have tag is where your wind farms are. So that's what we're seeing right here in Illinois and what we saw last night rolling over Texas. Okay, we got that. Static charge above wind farms. Now we're also getting a bunch of several interference spikes emanating around Hurricane Michael to Hurricane Michael. Now it's getting close to this buoy. I'm only getting 52.4 knots, which I think it's like 58 to 60 miles an hour, something like that. Now they're telling you how, like, it's a category three. Now I was watching Mr. Mike Morrill's video last night, and he says they're getting it by the winds from the top. The, the these Hurricane Hunter planes were dropping instruments in, and that's how they're getting their wind readings. See, like, I thought the wind reading, readings came from the surface, but, uh, I guess not. Anyways, we'll move right along. This is from last night. See, I'm still confused as to why a lot of this hurricane, only half of it is showing up. But now we're starting to see more and more of the other half. 
and we got this one pencil beam here. Now this same beam was focused right at the center when uh, what was it, Tropical Storm Gordon came up to the Panhandle of Florida. And like I said, this is the fourth storm in a year that's went right over this. There's a paved pause unit, part of the space fence is right here as well. But we know that if they focus this pencil beam, what's the next red transmitter and searchlight mode that for more than five minutes it can heat that area of the atmosphere. Now that's documented, you know, in the mainstream uh, science or whatever. But we'll see other interference, another interference spike there. It showed up a little better on this one. This one. Yeah, there was one right there. So yeah, this is like I said here, the, the cool the cool dry air from from uh going over these wind farms creating electrostatic charge. And that's giving us these readings. Now when I get to the mimic map. This is the morph microwave imagery map. Now, somebody just shot me a picture of this in the comments. So I had to come over and take a look. And once again, like we did for the last hurricane, we see these beams shooting up from Antarctica. And you can tell that they're working on these two storms here. The one in the Gulf and the one off here in the uh, Eastern Pacific. I forget what this one's called. Walaka or something. But it may be too early to tell exactly what this is doing. Because I like coming this map. Because we can see, you know, where they in driving these storms with these pockets of dry air. But I think it's just a little too early to tell what's going on here. It may just be giving that an extra bump. But we will find out. We'll see. We'll see here probably later in the day. I, actually, this one kind of like falls apart. So, once again on the microwave map, during a major hurricane, or yeah, so-called major hurricane, we're getting funky anomalies on the microwave imagery map. Coming up from Antarctica. Now there are several devices down here in Antarctica for sure. I believe there's a Super Darn, which is uh, uh, what is it? The Royal Radar Network or the I uh, forget exactly what the the what they're called. A super, there's several Super Darns down there, I believe, and an ionosphere cater of some sort. But yeah, and then you can get into like how people like if you want to control the weather, you got to control control it from Antarctica. There's several videos on YouTube you can probably look that up about controlling the weather from Antarctica. Is the the key if you want to control the weather around the world. But we see them little white dots in the center. And we see something emanate right here, right up even before that white stripe there. We can see something. Let's open up, focus up, a beam going up right there. See, right here. And then, bam. But anyways, that's my report. I just wanted to uh, cover these radar anomalies, microwave anom anomalies, the buoy data. Take a look at the world view real quick. You could see this nice square and flat edge on this storm in Texas from them pushing this eastward. And this flow is going straight north. But I believe eventually when this tails around, it's going to combine with Michael and roll right up the east coast. See lots of ship tracks here in the Pacific. Anyways, that's my report for this morning. We'll check back in later.